Okay, this this is the House Health Care Committee. It is Thursday, March 11th, and it's uh, just a little before 4, 3.50. And um, we are going to walk, have a walkthrough of H210, which is a bill we've been taking extensive testimony on over the past number of weeks. It's the, it's in short version, the House Health Equity Bill or House Any Health Disparities Bill. Uh, and before we start, I want to publicly thank our ledge council person, Katie McLinn, who's with us to walk through the bill for her, both for her initial work with the originators of the bill, but particularly in the last few days for her uh, attention to redoing this redraft of 210, which tries to bring it in consistency with what we as a committee have discussed, what we've heard from some witnesses and what I think will make it much more possible to potentially move the bill tomorrow. Um, so Katie, thank you. Uh, and I, I would just say this is involved uh, talking to Katie after the kids are in bed. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, your work is very much appreciated in addition to your helping us think about several aspects of it. So everyone should have this new redraft. And um, I think I think what probably makes sense is to first, is to do this in several stages, to first do a broad overview rather than a line by line review. Uh, because we've, we've been through this bill before, but now it is changed in its structure. Uh, and I think rather than listing every word that's changed, Katie, I think let's do a broad overview of section like this section remains similar to this. This section has been changed. And, and, and um, I think that would be a first step in terms of understanding what we have in front of us. So with that, uh, if, and do folks want to have it, was it helpful to have it on the screen or do, does it work better to have it? I think it's good for the public that it's on the screen because if someone's watching on YouTube, they might be able to see it to be honest, but I'm not attached. Okay. Well, it, I, I need it on the screen because I can't flip back. Yeah, okay, and okay fine. Then we'll put it on the screen. But but just particularly right now, uh, Katie, you're going to need to, I guess you can have, you you and Colleen work it out so you have control over it. Um, we're not going to, this is not a line by line walkthrough at this point in time. Okay. Do you and, want us uh, to hold off on our comments, Chair? Yes, I yes, I think I think I would. Thank you, Woody, for asking. I think at this point, let's let's kind of hold your comments, make note of them, but uh, let's first walk through to, so everyone has a more shared sense of the structure that is there now, as opposed to what had been there previously, and then we'll then we'll come back and we'll start uh, a different type of walkthrough. Does that work for folks? Okay. So with that, Katie, uh, if you would uh, put it on the screen and. Sure. Katie McGlynn, Office of Legislative Counsel. Let me see if I can pull up this document. Are you seeing H210 on your screen? I am. Um, okay. Would it, would it be helpful to have so it? This... To, can, you, can you increase the font size a little bit on the screen still? Uh -huh. I think that helps when we're okay. Does that work for folks or do we need it larger? Good. You can also slide the slider thing over and make it larger on your screen. Okay. I'm not, that's not very instructive. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, I think let's start with this and uh, we'll count on others to adjust as they need or, or request something more. I, I think I think what she meant was the standard screen. If you press the standard screen, it'll make um, the bill larger and it'll make all the participants smaller. Does that make sense? Um, well, for those for whom it makes sense, 
you go right ahead and the rest of us will just <laughs> thank you woody though okay so wh why don't we give it a shot and if we need to make adjustment uh we can okay so this is draft 2.1 you haven't missed a 1.1 that was just an internal document that i uh, made for myself um and in terms of a big picture um, the first section, if you remember, was a findings section of the bill as introduced. And you'll notice that the findings have not changed significantly with the exception that there is a new subdivision. So there's a new subdivision uh, seven, Let's scroll down to find that. And that new subdivision seven has to do with um, statistics on LGBTQ youth that come from the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. So that's a new language and um, this isn't the, the moment for the line by line, but it's right here um, in subdivision seven and we're on page six. So that is the only change to the finding section in this amendment. The next section of the bill also has not changed. It's the legislative intent and purpose and this section has had no substantive changes to it. So I'll skip past that. Is this, can, let me just stop. Uh, inter, I'm just, is this working for people to do it at this high level to get a structural idea? Okay. Thank you, Kate. I'm sorry, continue. Thank you. Um, so next we get to section three and I was just going to pause here to maybe give a, a big picture before we go through each section. So this is the chapter that um, pertains specifically to health equity. So this is a new chapter um, that it would be added to title 18. Um, and the bill is introduced, this is where the office was created, this is where the grants were. And so those two pieces have been removed from this draft. What has been retained is a definition section, a data collection section, and then probably where the most change has happened is the advisory council piece. Um, and that has changed to reflect the fact that the advisory council is going to have um, some work to do before the office itself could be created. Um, so that's what you'll see in this section. Um, and I think the idea here with creating a new chapter is the recognition that this is one step um, in, a, in a building block, one step in the plan for, for future action. So this is um, kind of planting a seed um, in terms of having this chapter codified um, in the green books. For, for amending in the future and adding to in the future. So um, with regard to the definitions, all of the definitions in the bill as introduced have been retained. So I won't spend any time there. And then we get to the section on the Health Equity Advisory Council. Um, and again, I, I don't think you want a lot of detail here, but the concept but the is that the Health Equity- Commission. Commission, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that the Health Equity Advisory Commission is being created um, and its goal is to uh, look at health equity, eradicate health disparities, um, and also amplify, amplify the voices of impacted communities. But it also has this um, kind of subcharge, which is to look at what an office might look like, provide strategic guidance on the development of that office and provide recommendations on the structure, responsibilities and jurisdiction of a future office. The membership has not changed with the exception that this advisory committee would be led by the executive director of racial equity. And that person will be the chair. Otherwise, the subsection B has not changed Um, the terms have, um, of each office, of each appointee has not changed. The powers and duties have changed uh, quite a bit to reflect the fact that there's kind of a multi-year approach. So the first charge of the group is setting up an office or providing guidance on what an office would look like. Um, so that's in subdivision one. And then... Um, the rest of the um, items listed here um, kind of look to the advisory commission being um, kind of an ongoing commission to make recommendations and not just providing short-term advice about the office, but providing um, ongoing recommendations. 
So some of this language is in the bill is introduced, um, but you'll see in subdivision two, this is making recommendations to an office once established, um, including input on these items, um, reviewing and monitoring, advising um, state agencies and current and emerging policies. That's from the bills introduced. Subdivision four is from the bill is introduced. And also, um, there's uh, this subdivision five advising the General Assembly on efforts to improve cultural competency and anti racism in the healthcare system through training and continuing education requirements for healthcare providers or other clinical professionals. Um, so, just to flag that this one piece in subdivision five um, kind of um, recognizes that there is work to be done with regard to continuing education, but it isn't prescriptive as to what the continuing education requirements would look like. If you remember in the bill as introduced, there was a section specific to continuing educa education that was um, kind of prescriptive. So this is just um, saying that this commission is going to give advice on that issue. Uh, with regard to assistance, um, the Advisory Commission is to have assistance of the Agency of Administration, which is where the Executive Director of Racial Equity is housed. There is an annual report. That language has not changed since the bill is introduced. Um, we have language about the meetings. This has not significantly changed with the exception that the Executive Director of Racial Equity is calling the first meeting. Um, and there have not been other changes to this commission. The next section was in the bill is introduced. This is the, the data collection section. So this has remained the same with the exception um, that we're, we've referenced the executive director of racial equity uh, instead of the, the director of the office that hasn't yet been created. That's what the original bill introduced. So otherwise this has stayed the same primarily. And then um, this, Section four is new. This is existing law about the duties of the executive director of racial equity. And there's been a new duty added to reflect the fact um, that that executive director now has new responsibilities, namely um, leading the health equity advisory commission um, until the office of health equity is established. So that is this new subdivision four. Excuse me, could we go over that slower? If it's, if it's new. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I mean, we're just looking at this, so. Yep, that's fine. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm wondering why would this wouldn't be underlined if it was new, or this is new into the bill, but it's it's existing language. Is that what it means, Katie? Yes, it's yeah. new okay. to the bill. Everything that's not underlined is existing law. Existing. And then the added addition is this underlined language. So we're just adding one new duty to existing law. Does that help? Okay. And then um, this section five is also new language that was not in the bill as introduced. And this comes back to the issue of continuing education. So this um, sets a timeline by which the Health Equity Advisory Commission is to provide advice to the General Assembly about continuing um, education proposals. So by October 1st of 2022, the commission in consultation with licensing boards, professional organizations, providers of all healthcare and clinical professions, um, are to the commission is to submit a written report to this committee in Senate Health and Welfare with recommendations for improving cultural competency and anti-racism in Vermont's healthcare system through initial training, continuing education, um, and investments. So that's a new reporting requirement. Section six is new. This is an appropriation section. This um, appropriates 180,000 in fiscal year uh, 2022 to the agency of the administration, again, where the executive director of racial equity is currently housed. And this money's coming from the general fund. The purpose of this appropriation is to carry out the provisions of the act then there's also intent language, recognizing that um, this work is going to be done over more than one year. So this intent language is that the General Assembly would um, 
be providing similar appropriations in fiscal years and future fiscal years until the Office of Health Equity is established. And then the act is taking effect on July 1 of this year. So I will stop sharing so you can see each other. Okay, so this is, so that's, I think that's helpful in trying, hopefully that's helpful in trying, in terms of trying to outline the overarching restructuring of the proposal from what had been earlier a proposal to immediately implement an office of health equity within the Department of Health. And so what we have now is a proposal to use the office of racial equity and the and to work with the director of racial equity on an interim transitional basis to stand up the commission and to have the commission subsume several of the responsibilities one of which is to to work with the director of racial equity and, and I want, I guess what, what I want to say and be clear about is that this bill provides resources to that office for them to either con for them to contract with a person or persons or an entity to assist them so that we're not trying to add a, a new responsibility to that office with no new resources. They already have plenty of responsibilities and elsewhere in budget proposals, there our proposals to staff that office with two other positions, which already have other responsibilities. So this would be not adding a new permanent position, an additional permanent position to that office, but because there's these transitional responsibilities to give them the resources to contract with, like I say, person, persons or an entity under the direction of the director of racial equity to stand up the commission, to work with the commission, give the commission the opportunity to give input into the actual structure, location, et cetera, of an office of health equity. And additionally, uh, in this version, we took, we also gave the commission the responsibility to advise and create a report on further continuing education for healthcare professionals around cultural competency, et cetera. I think that is the broad overview. Some of that isn't as spelled out, but that's, that's, what, the fun, that's what the funding is intended to do. Uh, and it, so anyway. So could we, could we, um, I'm, I'm trying to think about how best to work our way through this. I see there are questions. I think what I'd like to do is to first invite questions, comments, suggestions of, around the larger, larger framework rather than like what word is used on line, page 10, line five. If we can, if we can start by hearing questions about whether this is in fact reflects what our testimony has been whether it's or your comments or questions about the the, bre the broader structural issues, and we will we will keep working our way back through the entire document eventually. So uh, I'm again I'm don't know who I, I'm not sure it matters who was first in the. It was Representative but, Goldman, Representative Black, and then me. Thank you, thank you. It's just hard on my screen to when yeah, I'm, I, I think do it, the, other the way they show up in a list on the it, thing yeah. is, but. Okay, well then, so Representative Golden and Representative Black and Representative Donahue, and we'll, we'll, everyone will get a chance to weigh in. So there's, that's not to be concerned about. Representative Golden. So I'm inferring as this bill is presented that the Director of Racial Equity is taking that on. And I imagine that there's been communication with that office. We haven't really heard that. The last testimony- Well, no, she had, she, no, well let, me, let me stop and say that she has actually been in our committee. And no, we've taken testimony from her about this. Oh, totally, but not about well, whether her office would be willing to, you know, be the be the temporary place for this. Or maybe I'm 
was sleeping, but maybe I was an old woman sleeping and you know, whatever, but let's not go there. <laughs> I, I just missed that, that she agreed. The last testimony we heard was from someone from the racial alliance who talked about a consultant um, and maybe having it set up that way. And I didn't understand that the um, director of um, racial equity was willing to take that on, which I think is totally cool. So that's how it landed. And I just am. Okay. Well, let me, let me fill in some, let me fill in some information because in fact, I have had conversations directly, which outside of the committee, but she did in fact in, in the committee, I believe uh, when She's, we talked, she gave, it was very preliminary. She gave some, maybe I think, you know, it might work. It was, it was preliminary when okay. she discussed and I okay. know you had well, further. And, and, and I, I it's just, to be honest, there's so many moving parts right now. It's hard to keep track of it all. Uh, but I asked, uh, while we did have this on our agenda, we weren't sure when we'd have the draft. I did ask uh, Colleen to contact Susanna to let her know that we were doing a walkthrough of this. Uh, I can say that she has communicated that, but we should see that she is able to communicate about that with the full committee. And that's something we should do for tomorrow because that's important. But um, thank you, Leslie. It's, it's, again, it's, yes, it's implicit, but it needs to be explicit. Um, so I need to. Representative Black. Yeah, just I know, oh, no, you're, I you're writing seen. down for yeah, I thought no, you were need, looking for your I, list. I, you just have to bear with me because I'm yeah, going to no, need to notes and uh, just give me, just bear with me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were looking for the name of who was up next and then no, I realized no, you're no. putting a note. Can I down. withdraw my question anyways because I had the exact same question? Okay, good. Well, then, then <laughs> that, yeah, okay, appreciate it. Um, and uh, I thought it was the basis for our whole discussion on funding, um, funding people to uh, do this kind of work is that she original, she was the originator of, when, when she said she was willing to do it, she said, yeah, if it's funded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, so yes, I, 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 yes, but we will, I'm, we're contacting her as we speak to see when and if she's available tomorrow, because that, that could be important. Okay. Um, so Representative Donahue and then Representative Peterson. Yeah, I want, I want to just give a general reaction to the sort of change that we've been discussing and the, the reformatting, because um, I think some people will see it as a step back and be disappointed. Oh, you're not going to do the office. It might be several years. Who knows? It's not clear. Um, and I actually think it's so fundamentally um, important to um, do it from the ground up in the sense of um, the people who have the most at stake, who are quote unquote advisory, and yet um, who ought to be the ones building from the beginning. And, and I really relate to this from my own experience, you know, specifically in the psychiatric survivor community where, you know, a lot of times um, input means okay, this is what we've done. Uh, tell us what you think is good or bad about us. Tell us where the curtains should go in the building. Um, and to turn that around and say, no, how, you know, whether the building even gets built or how it's constructed needs to come with the input and the insights of the people that we're trying to, um, you know, help address health equities. So I, I think this is just um, a really positive and important way to shift that paradigm. And I'm going to step in here and say that I was trying to think why, why in, in addition to the fact that I acknowledge that I have had direct conversations with uh, Susanna Davis on, 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 on several occasions in, in the interest of trying to see what might be possible to see what you know, thoughts were, et cetera. Um, but I'm recalling that in line with what Representative Donahue was saying, 
that I think one of the important points that she made in her testimony to our committee was the idea of adding process equity to the structure. And that that I think is what another way of describing some of what Representative Donahue is describing, which is that this is not just a matter of saying, we're going to have, we're going to tell you how many times you meet and we're going to tell you uh, how, what you're going to, you know, how you're going to do it and et cetera. But the, I, rem I remember that was for me a very important piece of input in her testimony and suggested then in part, what, what I took from that, I think some of us took from that was uh, in addition to the suggestions from the Alliance and others, that the commission itself, that the standing up of the commission and giving the commission and those affected communities who are on the commission, giving them a greater voice in the actual uh, decision about when, how, and where to and whether in fact, to establish an office of health equity uh, was partly uh, in response to the suggestion that process equity was also an important element in this. So that, I think that's to help explain to others why I felt like we had heard from her and that we're following her guidance in part uh, as part of this, not just her guide in, input, but others as well. The other piece I wanted to comment on is, is you know, there's a, a, there was a, an aha connection that I, I can't imagine why I didn't think of it before, but I think Wednesday morning, was that only a day ago? Um, Judy Dow, when she testified and, and the other folks about the eugenics movement in Vermont. And I've been working for many, many years to get a resolution of apology for the eugenics movement. And that very day I was being asked to testify and talk about some of that history and the interrelationship of those issues around um, the barriers to good health care now arising out of what we as a state did not all that long ago was, was, um, was a really powerful reminder to me that connection that I failed to make until that, the timing. Yes. Okay, uh, Representative Peterson. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Bill, I, I want to understand something you just said a, a few minutes ago, so I know what we're doing here as far as setting this up. The Office of Racial Equity is going to hire a contractor to set up the commission. Is that is that what we're is that what you said? Is that what you mean? Well, it, 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 they we are giving. I'm this the way it's structured right now is that they would we. We as the legislature would be turning to the Office of Racial Equity to, and we give them the resources to hire whether a consultant, perhaps a consultant is a better term or a, con somewhat a contracted person. And the distinction I wanna make is that it's not a full-time ongoing permanent position in their office for this purpose. Right, oh, they're, they're, they do a job and then their job is finished. Yes, they do a job and then that, and when that job went right. when that, this is a construct that we're proposing right now. Things could morph and change, but the process we're, the process we're suggesting right now is that there would be a temporary new duty and temporary new resources to the Office of Racial Equity to assist in a, to assist in standing, what we call it, maybe standing up the commission, getting the commission underway, facilitating the commission, then in the process of making proposals back to the legislature about the establishment of an office of racial equity. Is, is but, that in the bill, in the change we just made? Because I missed that totally. No, it isn't. Yes, I think it is. And and I think we need to be clear that it is. But well, uh, no, but no, I, I think the specific question is the reference to hiring a consultant in the bill. And the answer to that is no, it's oh, simply okay. it's telling it's telling the offices of racial equity, you you need to put this together and we're okay, giving you the resources. Right, okay. well, and, yeah. and, and How they it, do it's up to them. We can't micromanage what they do. Exactly. Yeah, we're not, yeah, not going to micromanage. Precisely. But it is, but it is, I think it's implied by 
and maybe it maybe there's maybe it'd be useful to make it explicit in some other way but it's implied by the language when it gives the new when the section you were asking about representative peterson about the new duty given to the director of racial equity the, un, the new underlined section it deliberately says temporarily uh, i don't have it right in front of me but um Yeah, I have it. I have yeah, it yeah. On page twenty, on page twenty, line ten, it says, "Temporarily overseeing and chairing the advisory commission," and that that and that's deliberate because this is this is not an ongoing responsibility, added responsibility of hers, in this case hers because it's Susanna. Um, it's and it's a transitional responsibility. That's how I would that's how I would describe it. It's a transitional responsibility for the period of time that there is this new duty with some additional resources to assist her in the standing up of this commission, facilit and I think implied facilitating the commission process, who then will then have input through a process that they determine through the frequency of meetings as they determine through the, whether it's subgroups or the whole group, or, I mean, that's really not for us to, I don't think we need to spell that out. Yeah, I'm just no, sitting but, here but, reading. <laughs> yeah, but in, in, implicitly, our, our expectation yeah. is that probably okay. the way she would do that w with those resources would be to hire and bring in a consultant to help that process. Again, a temporary interim transitional research. Consultant, right. No. And, and can I say what, can I say, for, because I'll say this, this is no, there's no secrets about this. Uh, when we turn to the appropriations committee in say in some other settings or some other other committees are saying we would like you appropriations committee we're recommending that you establish for instance i think there's a proposal to establish two new positions in what once was called the criminal justice training council i think it's now called the criminal justice council or something and they're saying we need two new positions they need to be funded. And not only do they need to be funded, when the appropriations, the creation of a position, you have to appropriate or designate an actual position of state government as well, which is an ongoing commitment to someone filling that job and having it over a period of time. We are not asking for a position. And that's language that matters a lot in the appropriations world. We are not asking for a position of state government to be created in this. We're asking for re resources that will be used on a temporary transitional basis. So the other thing for new members that may be just a reminder or a clarification, we are, we are saying this is how much money we think, or if, if we pass it in this way, this is how much money we think it will take. That isn't a decision that we make or that ends up. Our bill will not go to the floor. It'll go directly to appropriations. It'll go, right. Because of the fact that it includes money in it, by rule, it goes to appropriations next. They make the decision about whether or how much funding to attach because they've got to juggle all the other committee bills that are saying, we need money to do this. We That's need right. money to do that. They have to sort out that process. Yes, thank you. That's that's helpful. And in fact, I should tell you, <laughs> in the way that this world works, you know, many part, many moving parts. I have now been asked to come even before we have made a formal decision to approve this bill. If you recall, we had to put in our budget memo to the Appropriations Committee several weeks ago. We had a section in there where we said we had one hundred thousand dollars to support this process. A placeholder. As a placeholder. Subsequently, my best judgment is that it should be $180,000. That ultimately will be decided by the Appropriations Committee. But they have asked me to come in there tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock to explain to them the funding part of this bill. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to get all their work done. So I'm going to go there to explain that part of the bill to them. But that'll be before we've approved a bill. But 
if we are, I mean, I, I'm assuming we're going to approve something, but, but that, but it's, 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 it's not premature, but it's, it's preliminary. They need to know they want, they're trying to figure some things out. So that that's part of what will happen tomorrow as well. Does that help clarify that at all, Art? Sorry. <laughs> no, I, it, it, it clarifies it. Um, you know, I just wanted to know what the mechanization was. I, I, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your hand is up in case you don't notice, but yeah. Okay. Uh, other, right, Woody, Representative Page. Thank you, Representative Lippert and members of the committee. A <laughs> um, couple of um, questions that I have. I don't know sure. whether it can be any clearer than it already is, um, maybe not. But we talk about the various different levels of research. It, it's confusing reading, reading through the various items and um, you don't know um, or at least I don't, don't really, I'm not really clear on where the research is coming from. Um, you, which part are you referring to? So well, just I, help I'm me out. about, you know, one through, page one through. You're talking about the findings? The findings. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, you know, like the, the findings, the General Assembly finds that research, okay. Then it goes into, according to the 20, 2018 Vermont Department of Behavioral Risk. Um, it's just, it's just okay. confusing to me. Okay, can can I can I say something about that, or I don't want to sure, interrupt sure. you. I don't want to cut you off. It's just a comment, you know. No, but let me. But I think it's it's worthy of of asking. And I, I so Katie has, uh, Katie, you're there. You are. There. <laughs> People <laughs> move around on the screen. I'm sorry. So. Um, I'm going to suggest that we perhaps find a time, probably not right now, but find a time to go through the findings in particular as a separate process for the committee. Because we've never done that. Because we've not done that. But also because Katie has assured me that in her work of creating the findings, every finding has a reference. So every finding is is tied to some document or some point of research or point of um, some point of uh, documentation. Is that correct, Katie? Is that do you want to say something about that? Just just in the that's broad term. Yep, that's accurate. When I put together findings for any bill, I put together a packet um, of of supporting authority in the bill file, the official bill file, so that travels. With the bill as it moves through the process. And that would be particularly important for somebody reporting a bill when somebody on the floor says, well, where does that fact come from? And yeah, then yeah. they would have access to it. So I think that's so so I, I suggest that we will go through the findings and uh Katie can I mean and Katie can help us understand where any particular finding is documented uh, in the process, because I think those are, I think that's a that's a very important question you're asking, Representative Page, and it's and it's uh, some of the findings may be new information to some of us. Uh, I mean, it's, to be quite honest, uh, I, I have to tell you, I could not if I could not have recited the findings uh, just to say that it's my knowledge personally right now that every finding that is here is something I could have recited, but every finding here has a point of documentation. Uh, and so some of it is new information to us. And I will suggest a lot of it's going to be new information to our colleagues. And that's why it's important that it is documented. And, and, and I'm not suggesting that the information isn't documented. No. I'm just-, just No, I know, no, I understand. But, but I, think, I think it's important to put it in the reference point that, uh, part of the work of our committee, as with all the other bills, is that we end up hearing testimony and learning about things in a, at a level of granularity or detail that other committee, other, others of our colleagues don't have that opportunity to do. 
in the same way that they, when they reported some of the bills on the floor today, it may be that, I mean, I'm just going to speculate here, but it may be that not every one of us was thoroughly familiar with every detail of everything they put before us, but they are, and they're bringing it to us again, based on the testimony their committee has heard and the recommendations of their committee. Okay. Um, also, I, I don't know whether this is, is pertinent or not. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about non-white Vermonters, mm -hmm. who, who are we talking about? You know, are we you talking know. about LGBT? Are we talking about BIPOC? Are we talking? It's it's. There's a definition of that in the bill. I think Katie could direct us to that because well, there's. A... Yeah, remember we just did the broad overview. We didn't go through it in yeah, detail just, for people. You no, know, to... I mean we go right into the bill and we start talking about non-white Vermonters. I think it would be right up front, um, but that's 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 just my thought. Okay. Well, Katie, I, I will rely on Katie as well as other legislative council in terms of structure, but I think there is a definition section. And I think that as an example, I think has a definition in the definition section. Okay. As, as does LGBTQ Vermonters. Uh, but we will, we will again walk through the definitions section. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I'll uh, just leave it at that right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But thank you. Those are those are actually very important questions. Uh, I'm going to turn to, and I don't know whether Representative Chino, why don't you or Leslie, whichever, might have gone first, please. You're 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 uh, you're muted. Oh, I said I'm not sure who was first. Was it you, yeah. Representative Goldman? Well, it might have been me, and I'm going to be quick. I just want to echo uh, Representative Page. I was really confused on the findings section about where that data was coming from, and I don't under I don't really know sort of the normal structure of a bill and whether you give a citation after every one. But whenever it says research says it's going to pe you know people are going to like say really I don't believe you kind of thing. Right. So right. I don't know what the normal process is, but. You know, get defining that, I think, and, and really standing on real data, I think, is important here. I just want to add one more well, thing, I don't, if I may. Um, but I really want to thank you for taking that on, both you, Katie, and Representative Lippert, so that we can go through that data and have it really clear for our colleagues. I don't know if this is appropriate, but, you know, when we say that, um, I guess, non-white is the language we're using, uh, uh, Vermonters is like 6%. Well, it turns out to be like 50,000 people. And I think it's important somewhere in there to really put the absolute number of the number of people we're talking about because that's a lot of people. And I think we need to think about that. So I'm hoping that somewhere in there we can actually put an absolute number of who we're talking about. So that was my only comment. Okay. Uh, and can I, can I ask Katie to comment on the what what is the protocol for putting documentation within a bill or findings, et cetera? I'm, I'm going to turn to you, Katie, on that. Sure. Um, sometimes we will we'll put a phrase according to X source, this, that, and the other, because the findings were so extensive and because sometimes findings for one particular subsection are coming from multiple sources. Um, I, I didn't do that except with um, subsection seven. Um, if that's something the committee is interested in, I can look to try to integrate some of the references back in, um, but we don't necessarily need, I, I don't necessarily think there's a standard practice so long as it's backed up in the bill file. I think either is acceptable. Okay, so, so it could be acceptable to integrate more of the documentation into the findings so that, in fact, we weren't having to explain to people that, well, this has a source, et cetera. Absolutely. So, I mean, that, I mean, I know that's asking for a fair amount of integration of information there, but what I'm hearing is that that seems like that might be a helpful piece, but let's, 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 think that through before we ask Katie to go do that. But I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some head nods yeah. in terms of, and, and, and I think 
in terms of communicating with our colleagues and communicating with our public. That's exactly it. Uh, that's that's that has the potential to be helpful. It may be. Yeah. I'm seeing sufficient. I guess I'm seeing sufficient and hearing Woody, you raised the question initially, and I think that that might have helped to answer your question as to, you know, where does these, where are these facts, or if they are facts, where are they coming from? These are questions which we know we will be asked. So I would like to be able to explain some of it, where this came from, too, if that's okay. Yeah, okay. That's why I had raised my hand. Okay. Um, that, um, you know, I, I created the bill with the Racial Justice Alliance. That's how it started. I mean, that's we're pretty explicit about that. They were the first people to come in and testify. Um, when we were when we were talking about the issue of of disparities in the healthcare system, we actually the the Racial Justice Alliance has data people. One of them spoke here. Um, his name was Pat Rotelio. You might remember. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was the one white person who spoke. And the data team is constantly looking for studies, reports, um, places that the state reports data and like, and like analyzing it. And we look to that data when we're trying to hash out like policy solutions to the problems that we're seeing. And so when we, we, when we, were, when we talked about problems in the healthcare system, we had a lot of qualitative data, you know, people's stories, which we heard in our testimony, but we understand that you also need to show the numbers. So we reviewed um, a, a variety of sources and and, and Katie and Ledge Council's job is to make sure that those sources are valid, um, and they did that. And there's a there are other bills I worked on where um, the lawyers chose to include citations. And when we were working on this bill, we just didn't do it, and I didn't question it. Um, so I I think if there's a way to add them in, it's fine. And at the very least, something that I think would be helpful is, and I can try to help with this unless it would be easier for me to stay out of it, would be to create a list of the of the sources like in one place that the findings come from and links, because a lot of them you can click on a link and get to a report somewhere online. And so Katie, I don't expect you to do all this, but if, if I had a list of the sources, I could see if we could create a list that would become part of our record where anyone who wants to see where what these findings are could go on our website, go to what one of our, you know, the healthcare page, click on the day that it's entered into the record and they can actually go and explore those sources directly. So I'm just offering that because I do believe that we need to be accountable and transparent to people about why we're making the decisions we're making. And that's why the findings were so detailed because we felt it was important to show the numbers behind the stories. So um, I really think it'd be nice to have a list. I think what, what, you, what you're talking about, Brian, in the, in the old days would be something that might um, be left on each person's desk on the house floor in case they wanted to, you know. Right. So, further. so, so in, in the interest of process and moving forward, which is what I'm trying to have us work on, I think asking Katie to create that list is not reasonable right now. But Brian, if you or others would be able to create, I, I see that as a, uh, a, a an ancillary document or a, 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 a I'm reaching for the word, but something something that would actually be provided to anybody who is wanting that. But I do think the suggestion, and I think I'm wish I, but here we are, uh, Katie. I think trying to integrate those references into the findings in as much as possible. I think it sounds very clear that that would be a positive addition to strengthening the bill and clarifying that. Is okay. that achievable? Yes. Okay, well then I'm going to ask as the chair on behalf of the committee to ask you to take that task on. Sure. Okay, and I think that's, this is, this is again, a very helpful part of the process of thinking about how to move forward. So let's, let's assume that that's going to happen. Let's, uh, and I want to be clear, we need to, and I, Brian, you're the lead sponsor of the bill, but uh, I would want to make certain that people are not somehow um, on, because clearly, uh, by, I don't mean bias in the negative word, but that you have, a, you have an investment in this bill, 
So, I, but I would ask if you would be willing or to have some, if we could find a way, if not for tomorrow, if for at some point that similar uh, listing of references where you, you know, these days, cause you actually can click and, and it's amazing. You know, you could, you, whereas otherwise you'd have to be searching all over the place, but you could actually have live links to many documents, if not all documents. But that's that's a task that I don't want to ask Katie to do in the next period of time. But it could be something that we create in anticipation of taking the bill to the floor or to other committees. I have no problem doing a little bit of work to create that. And I actually feel like as the lead sponsor, it's my responsibility to make sure that the committee has the information well, we need to make the decision. Um, and people, like I said, I will create a list and try to give direct links, and then you can feel free to go examine those links and use your own um, due dil you know, your own diligence to yeah. like explore the sources. But you'll see that a lot of it is like state reports and things yeah. like that. So I think that would be a terrific additional resource to accompany the bill. So that I, I, I really like that suggestion. And I like, I really like the idea of live links. Uh, you know. So. I, I agree. I think in, in this day and age, why not make it as easy as possible for the public to access the information, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, I see Representative Cordes. So I'm just going to keep, we're going to keep, this is, this is, I think this is being very helpful uh, from my point of view. Anyway, Representative Cordes and then Representative Page, further questions or thoughts? On, and I'm at this um, point on the, on the broad structure still. Okay. Well, if it's not, I mean, but, this is but sort of. Go ahead, not just it, go ahead. It, it could be a broad question, but it's um, stated in the bill. I, on page twelve, line seven, um, is where the first reference to non-white is mentioned, and um, I, I think I understand the paragraph is explaining why we're using that phrase, um, but the the phrase is still super problematic in that it others. Um, it you know makes the white bodies the norm and everybody else is not um, sort of like mm -hmm. able-bodied people and um, disabled people. Um, and I'm wondering if there's first of all, um, if anyone can help me, Brian or others, remember um, if the Racial Justice Justice Alliance and other folks that helped with this bill were okay with that being structured that way or if there's a way to make that make it clearer that we are not wanting to normalize the phrase in statute mm -hmm. so we use we we included that definition as a way of of acknowledging that this is we're using that term because it's in the data it's in the findings like if you look through the reports that's the word that's used so if we were going to use the word in the bill, we wanted to have our own explanation. So we define, we put our own spin on a definition of what non-white means. And I think it even got amended a little bit to soften it. So, um, so if people feel like it needs to be amended further, I'm open to that. But I, I think we need to leave it in because if we don't, then we're normalizing it even further to not s explain what we mean by non-white and just acting like it's like a yeah. word that we should all use, you know? I'm not saying take it out. I understand why it needs to be in there. Um, but I think for mo for many people, it won't be clear. Um, and I don't want to hold the bill up with, with this, if this has already been run by the Racial Justice Alliance and um, all the other people that worked on it. Um, let's leave that. I think that's not resolved at this point, but let's 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 hold that question open and um, think about what the implications of that might be um, for the bill and for yeah. Representative Page. Yes, I found the other the other item that I was looking at mm -hmm. um, on page seven talks about individuals who um, experience health in inequities. And I, and I know I touched on it with some of our witnesses with questions regarding you know, how they felt when they were meeting with their primary care physician or what have you. 
And um, I guess what I'm getting at here is I like more facts than I do feelings. Not that feelings aren't, you know, not that you don't have a sixth sense sometimes about, you know, an individual that you're dealing with, but um, I don't suppose there are any reports uh, on, um, on, on, you know, of, of individuals and how they, you know, um, didn't feel that services were provided for them or, you know, things like that. I, am I getting my point across? I, 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 I think you are, uh, and I'm not sure uh, I'm going to. Chair Lipper, can I explain those phrases? You can. That in, 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 I'd have to look exactly at what you're talking about, but initially my thought is that you're referring to some of the things that people reported in surveys. And so these are, these are, these feelings, these qualitative feelings were actually in a survey that I believe that, that one of them, I have to look at which survey it is and soon we'll have the sources for you to see. But if you look at the actual survey, they'll ask people like, do you feel this? Do you feel this? Do you feel this? And then they do statistics on it and then tell you like this percentage of people who took the survey of this race felt this way and the, this percent. So that's why it's doing that. It's not individuals writing in my understanding is, but I'd have to look before I'm a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I'm just, I'm just saying that these are individual feelings and, and, and I recognize it. Okay. But, but it's, it's, it's different. It's, and it's difficult to prove in many ways of, of when you're not being treated well, but yet, you know, in your heart of hearts that, you know, you're not, you're not treated as well as you perhaps should, you know? And, um, and, and do we even know whether these individuals actually did get treated in the end? I'm sorry, say the last part again. Did these individuals that had these, these, diff these different feelings, did they actually get treated in the end? Were they treated? Did they receive health care? Um, even though they didn't feel as though they were being, um, even though that maybe the, some of the services weren't supporting them as well as they thought they should be. Mm -hmm. I, well, I think, I think it's just a thought when I read this, I, I like to see, as they say, just the facts, ma'am, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and I know the feelings are, are important, but, um, I'll just leave it there. Well, I do I think- I don't know whether I'm getting my point across. Well, and, and I'm hearing Brian explain, as I have seen many surveys, you know, and maybe even have participated in some, uh, any one of us, like how did, you know, whether it's, let's take something more more uh, neutral. Uh, I, get a, I get a survey every time I take my car in for servicing at a dealership and said, how did you feel? How did you feel you were treated? Were you treated? It was it, it rated excellent, you know, good, terrible. I mean, uh, were you? How did you feel? You know, basically, it, it, it's a quali it's a qualitative measure based on a survey. And in that instance, again, he's like, did your car actually get repaired? Well, maybe the car got repaired, but it didn't get repaired promptly. Maybe it got repaired only because I had to ask five times. Uh, or maybe I waited in line and I was the last person. I mean, so I'm just thinking in, in a different kind of setting, I think many of us provide that kind of feedback. And I think this is maybe akin to something like that. Well, and, and in many cases in that, those surveys, um, you're not being, those surveys are not being, you're not treating those surveys as, as honestly as perhaps you should. Um, oh, I don't know. In some cases, <laughs> if you want your car, you know, oh, after well, that sort of thing. Um, that there's a bias. <laughs> well, Based. in a way, you know, I I get these surveys from my doc, from my primary care physician. You know, uh -huh. and what do I do? Well, I don't know. All tens, you know, because I'm going to see them in another 
week or two, you know, and uh, and if I have a issue with him, I'll probably say it to him personally, but I'm not going to put it in writing and, and you know what I'm saying? Well, and interestingly, this is actually the reverse issue, which is people expressing concerns rather than a bias in over, I don't know, I'm not sure I'm helping this conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm not either. So we'll just move on. Can I try to go ahead, Ian? And then just, let's, I, let's I, I know my hand wasn't up, but I'm trying to respond in real time. I'm also, just what, thinking, what you, I'm paying attention I, to the time, and I think we'll we'll yeah. go we'll go for a little for longer, and then we'll stop for the for today. I mean, what, what Woody? I might be totally misunderstanding, but but what I'm hearing is that when you're listing findings, that findings that are based on how people feel, you don't think are as as key as findings based on what are the facts of outcomes. And, and I think that the distinction is that, that it's important to have both. And that what's key in this is that when we start having the actual citations, people will be able to link and see, okay, this was about how people perceived what they were getting based on this survey. We, you can assess it when you look at it, was it scientifically done? But this is objective facts here. And so, you know, I, I think we need to look at them separately and see that, you know, some of them are subjective, some are objective, and they all, you have to put them together to get a picture. You can't just let anyone stand alone because it wouldn't be adequate to really see what's the scope of the problem that we're trying or we believe needs to be addressed. I don't know if that's helpful, but that's, I think that's the key when we start looking through the findings that there are some that are about perception. Perception can matter. The car dealership is potentially going to change how it delivers its service based on hearing a lot of perceptions from people that, you know, they were treated badly, even though factually that owner can go and say, look, this is how I treat everybody. I, I know they're good, but boy, if there's a bad perception, I need to try to address it. So I think for how people feel is important. It, it can't stand alone. You have to have the hard facts also. And I think that's what the findings are attempting to do to reflect those different components that create the whole issue. I feel much better when you explain it uh, like that. And I think you, you've hit what I was trying to get at. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So let's take a few more uh, questions. I think, uh, again, I apologies. I don't know who, who represent Cordes, represent Goldman, whoever was in Goldman. line first. Um, I would like to address Woody's um, concerns because I think they're important. Um, I think it's the tension between qualitative and quantitative research. Quantitative is numbers, it's so clear and statistically significant. Quantitative, qualitative research is not as straightforward, but can be done as statistically significant. And that's why it's important to have the citations because if we can base our, this information on good qualitative research, then we can use that to inform this legislation. So, I'm not sure if that helps, but qualitative research is this whole other arena of how we find out about feelings and experience. But when you have a huge number of people reporting the same experience, you can then use statistics to say this is valid. So that's why this becomes important that we have the, cita the citation. citations. Yeah. Yeah. And you're able to explain it if somebody raises it on the floor. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's where I'm coming from is, yeah, this is qualitative, but it's statistically significant and well done research that that suggests or proves that these this is valid. Okay. So Katie's going to work with us to try to integrate citations and uh, that might be, you know, once we see that, that might also be helpful to some of the questions that we're raising. Representative Cordes. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it's also really important to step back and appreciate that the qualitative information that um, we're, we're referring to 
um, is human experience by people who are vulnerable within these systems um, that we're trying to address with health equity. And they, people that are already feeling vulnerable that don't have, that have a negative experience won't go back. Um, and we know that it prevents them from um, seeking care when they should. Um, sometimes it leads to death by suicide because they've, um, they've had bad, ex bad experiences and they don't wanna seek care. So I think it's also, it, it, for that reason, it's also um, very important to in include that, but it also shows that we do care. Um, you know, the people that worked on this legislation do care about that um, that input and honor the, the, the lived experiences of folks that um, experience difficulty in our, our current system. Okay. Ryan, represent Gina. I just want to let you know that I am, I have found um, something that I'll send to Katie that should help you. So I found some, I found some, um, a document where there's some it's, it, it'll probably need you to clean it up a little, but where there's some references connected with pieces of it. So I sent it to Katie and hopefully that helps you. Okay. And then I'll try to extract from that a list of sources. It okay. shouldn't take too much time, but I could, I, so I can have it tomorrow. Oh, that'd be terrific. That'd be terrific. Okay. So th I think this has been a very helpful next step in terms of the looking what's in front of us. Uh, Katie, thank you. You are going to be available to us for a good part of tomorrow, as I understand it. Is that correct? I believe so. I'm, I think I'm in and out of the committee in the morning, and I have a, a more yep. solid block of time in the afternoon. Yep. Okay. And um, uh, so I'm going to suggest we stop there for today. Does that seem like a, I mean, in terms of people's time and I think stop there for today. Uh, what we're going to look to for tomorrow is um, see how, if Katie's able to integrate some of that. Um, I don't think we've asked for any other structural changes at this point, uh, but that's important work around the findings. And Brian is going think, to work on a list sorry. of references. I think. Yeah getting to the actual, you know, walk through the bill will, will be the, I think probably the next. Yeah, yeah. Step to really. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay, so we've agreed that we're going to convene at eight o'clock and we're going to convene first on the other issue that's outstanding in our committee. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, we're going to do a lot of juggling tomorrow, but um, we as a committee identified that as a priority issue. Uh, and given what we have in front of us, we'll, we'll do our best to see if we can't bring some closure to that uh, and then continue with 210 throughout the day. Um, we'll, we're, we're going to do our best. We're going to do what we, we're going to do our best. So let's let's get rest, get some rest tonight, uh, and uh, I think we we have, I think we will, we're up to the task. So let's uh, we'll, we'll work together tomorrow, um, and uh, try to find our way to uh, an endpoint. Okay, so uh, thank you all.